Welcome. In this video, I'm going to conduct an exploratory factor analysis using just another stats program. So I have a fictional data set here with only six items, probably not ideal for conducting a factor analysis with only six variables and 64 observations, but it'll do just to demonstrate the analysis itself. So to conduct an exploratory factor analysis in JASP, you go to factor. If factor is not visible, you can make it visible by adding the module on the right. And you go to exploratory factor analysis. Uh, so we'll need to enter in all of the variables that we want to include in the factor analysis. Put that in the variables box. I'm going to start by doing just a factor analysis without any rotation and tell it to keep as many factors as possible, which is six. And I'm going to tell it to show the factor loadings above, let's say, 0.3-ish. And we'll want the scree plot. And we don't have missing data. For now, we'll just leave it at those options. So, looking at our factor loadings, uh, I told it again to drop all of the really low factor loadings with the factor loadings below, I think I put 0.29. So, that'll kind of make this easier to interpret. So we can see these three variables load very strongly on factor one. These three variables load fairly strongly on factor two. And econ three seems to load on factor three, but it loads more strongly on factor two, and factor three doesn't have any other variables that load strongly on it. So just looking at this, we get a pretty good sense that we're probably just going to retain two factors in this analysis. Uh, we didn't get the chi-square test for the model because we've included, we've asked it to estimate so much information with uh, not enough degrees of freedom, but scroll down here and we'll look at the scree plot and based on the scree plot we can see that we have the first factor which is relationship one two and three that is accounting for a good amount of variance and the second factor which is econ one two and three is a bit above one uh, some people use one as the cutoff for whether or not to retain the factor, provided it makes sense to, to retain the factor, provided it has meaning based on the, the items that load onto it. But wh what's nice about JASP is it includes the parallel analysis. And the parallel analysis generates eigenvalues based on random data with the same number of variables and the same number of observations um, and, f and uh, factors that you have in your data. And it generates that based on random data. So it's kind of like meaningless. And it will do it repeatedly so that you can get a percentile rank of the randomly generated data. And what we're looking for here is to make sure that our retained factors have 
observed eigenvalues that are above the 95th percentile of the randomly generated eigenvalues. And we see that our second factor and our first factor are well above the randomly generated data. And our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth factor are well below the randomly generated data. So what we're going to do is we're going to retain two factors. And if the factors are fairly interpretable, but we'll want to rotate the axis of those factors, of those two factors, and now we have our two-factor solution with the rotated axes, the factor loadings, the item loadings on the factors have uh, been tweaked a little bit. Usually that helps to increase the interpretability, but these data were generated in such a way so that it, it was kind of rigged from the get-go to form some clearly interpretable factors, even though there are only a few items and, and a very small sample here. Uh, so we see that we have factor one, which we'll call relationship variables, and factor two, which we'll call uh, the economic variables. We also have uh, this column that says uniqueness, and uniqueness will tell you how much variance in each item is not accounted for by the factors. So we see the relationship one, about 40% is not accounted for. Two and three, very small amount of the variance is not accounted for. Um, for Econ 1, 40% is not accounted for. For Econ 3, that's probably like our worst performing item here. Uh, we're, we're not accounted for about 69% of the variance in Econ 3. If this was, if we had a larger number of items loading on these factors, we might consider whether or not to retain Econ 3, but it does have a reasonably strong loading on the factor nonetheless. And we also have a chi-square test for the goodness of fit for this model um, as compared to the saturated model. And we would actually want this to not be significant. We'd want this to be, we'd want this p-value to be high rather than low. So the fact that the, the p-value is significant indicates that we may have a problem in terms of the fit of this model as it doesn't uh, fit the data as well as we'd like. And so that's the pretty much the basics of how to conduct an exploratory factor analysis using JASP. Uh, uh, it doesn't give as much output as uh, if you're used to SPSS or R or SAS. Um, in fact, in, in some regards, uh, it, it doesn't give a suitable amount of output. Uh, it's good for like a first pass in terms of learning factor analysis. It's nice that it does include the, the uh, parallel analysis, but a lot of the information that is standard for factor analysis, such as uh, commonalities and eigenvalues and the reproduced correlation matrix and the residual correlation matrix, unfortunately, are not yet a part of the output. Uh, you could get a nice path diagram to look at your model. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of how to conduct an exploratory factor analysis in just another stats program. Uh, it does give you some options in terms of the, the rotations. I did an orthogonal uh, 
rotation, which assumes that the factors are not related. But in uh, in reality, if this if this was real data, we might uh, do a slightly more complex approach where we use an oblique rotation that assumes that the factors will have some correlation between each other. Uh, another thing that I've noticed in JASP is that it doesn't give you an option for the estimation method. And the most common estimation methods are principal axis factoring and uh, maximum likelihood estimation. And I assume that it was using maximum likelihood because there are uh, additional fit indices which you could call up. But after some digging on the internet, I determined that it seems to use an approach for estimation that minimizes the residuals. Uh, so it's a different approach than what is standard, but uh, nonetheless, it's quick and easy way to run a factor analysis if, uh, and could be useful uh, for those purposes. So I thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did.